Hi, I'm Beth Green, and I'm here to talk to you about a campaign that I'm engaged in right now. And that campaign is called Unleashing the Power of Kids, Mobilizing Them for Fitness, Cooperation, Service, and Thought. Now, I want to tell you about this campaign, but first I want to tell you why we're doing it. My organization is called the innerrevolution.org, and I'm also the host of Interrevolutionary Radio, Interrevolutionary TV. I have a YouTube channel and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm talking to you now not as a member of those organizations, although our organization, the innerrevolution.org, is sponsoring this Unleashing the Power of the Kids campaign. I want to talk to you as one human being to another. See, I feel pretty bad about a lot of things that are going on on our earth, and I bet you do too. At the same time, I see a lot of hopeful signs. But then I look at the faces of our kids, and I think the kids, the grandkids, other people's kids, this is the future. I mean, it finally is dawning on me that the fate of humanity and our planet is not only resting in our hands, but more and more is resting in their hands. And what are they learning? What kind of attitudes and values are they bringing into their turn when they are uh, impacting and running the world? Well, what I see is way too much violence, too much competition, and a lot of self-centeredness and selfishness. Now, I see the same thing in us. I'm not saying that the kids are like this and we aren't, but that is the whole problem. We are like that and so are they. Now, do I think that kids automatically are better than their parents? They're more innocent? No, I don't think so. I think that kids absorb the values of their culture. I'm not talking about the values that we preach in the churches, the synagogues, the mosques, and the temples. I'm talking about the values we actually embody. And it's too much violence, too much competition, and too much self-centeredness. Okay, if you agree with that, then listen to the rest of this, because I've got to share something with you that I think you're going to find very exciting. The question that we're asking ourselves is how can we help to impact kids? Now, this whole thing started, believe it or not, around football. See, I, like I said, I'm the host of a radio show called Interrevolutionary Radio. And our show was about tackle football. They turn it off because there is so much violence in football. I don't care what justification you give it. There's not only very serious head traumas, which now even the NFL is admitting at least 30% of their players are going to get significant brain damage. And it's probably a lot more. Not only for the pros, but also for the high school kids, the little kids, they're discovering subconcussions. Just what you get when you're playing does brain damage. Well, but there's also physical violence in football. And, you know, kids are all revved up. Go, go, kill each other. I mean, it's just, like, unbelievable. They bond with each other and their team against somebody else. There's a lot of violence. There is a lot of damage to the bodies, minds, and spirits of kids. So, oh, my God, I was thinking about that, and it was really bothering me. And then I talked to other people, and they say, yeah, but my kids get so much out of football. So that made me start thinking, what do kids actually need? So this is what I came up with. And I bet you're going to agree. What kids actually need is are fitness, cooperation, service, and thought. Now, what do I mean by all of those? Well, kids have energy. You know, they have a lot of energy. And they need a way to channel that energy that is really valuable to them. And they need physical fitness. They need to be trained. I mean... We need physical fitness for our minds, our bodies, our spirits. I know because I don't have it. <laughs> and I wish I did, you know. So that's really important. But so much of our fitness, physical fitness is all wrapped up in competition. Now, I understand that. But see, why does physical fitness always have to be connected to competition? You know, why do we always have to feed competition? Because that brings us to number two. Kids need cooperation. They need to learn what we need to learn, that we're all better off when we work together. See, that's the beauty in a way of sports is that when kids are on team sports, they get to cooperate with one another, although sometimes they're actually competing with each other too. But then there's always the them-us thing. See, 
why can't we build a world where there's no them and it's only us? You think that's idealistic? Well, it's not. I'm going to tell you something. My husband and I, we're both, I'm not going to tell you our age, but it's fairly obvious. Okay. Well, I've also been chronically ill for 55 years, so I can't do much. So one day, uh, J my husband James, he gave me a golf club, and I started, you know, to try to swing. Well, I couldn't swing like a real person, but I went like this, right? That was the best I could do. And he and I devised the game of golf. We both played the same ball. It didn't matter what I did or what I didn't do. We played together, and the goal was to get the ball into the hole. We weren't competing, and we had a ball. We've done other things like that. You see, it's not that hard to imagine. And cooperation in the classroom, cooperation in our world, we need cooperation for people to find a cure for cancer. We need cooperation to find a way of dealing with extreme poverty, to deal with climate change. We need to learn how to cooperate. But when we're kids, we're taught to compete. See, and we're also taught to compete in school. It's like, oh, I'm a straight A student, or I got the highest grade. I was like that. See, I couldn't compete physically, but man, did I compete mentally. Now, I have come to discover that in life, in real life, when everybody does better and everybody knows more, we have a better society. You know, I can't figure out everything. I need other people. So we need cooperation, but our kids need to learn how to cooperate. Another thing our kids need is service. Well, see, if you take away the big emphasis on competition, how do people have a sense of value? It's like, oh, I'm so great. I'm so important. How about giving our kids a sense of value by helping them help others? Now, kids really respond to that. We have had some information, for instance, that kids and the elderly are brought together. I forget where that was, but it was in some other country. No, it was in Seattle, another country. Okay, it was in Seattle. And uh, it was great. It was great for the kids. It was great for the old folks. I mean, kids need to learn how to give. I don't mean from a perspective of, oh, we have so much and they are so needy and so we're going to give to them. It's not like that. You go in, you relate. You discover that service is a way of gaining benefit for yourself. Plus, it gives you self-esteem. I would love to see kids out there in homeless shelters, in uh, working, if they're old enough, doing Habitat for Humanity, which is also physical exercise. I'd like to see kids volunteering for old age homes uh, where I'm heading. Um, I want to see kids volunteering to go into other communities and talk to people of other nationalities to start being a service to one another. And again, the whole idea of this is that people recognize that their self-esteem and their empowerment comes from their wholeness, and their wholeness comes from feeling like a good person. See, you feel like you're a contributor to the world, and that makes you feel bigger. When you can identify with something larger than yourself, you feel bigger. See, look at football. Remember, we started with football. Say, I'm trying to figure out how to give people what they get from football in another way, in a better way, without the violence, see, in the competition. And, you know, you're in a football stadium and your team, you feel like you're part of something really big. Well, everybody is part of something really big. And that is finding a way to alleviate suffering on this planet, whether it's in our homes, you know, in our families, in our communities, in the bigger world. So... We want to give people, kids, and us, all of this applies to us adults too, even us granny type people. We want kids to have a sense of accomplishment from service. And finally, we want to teach them how to think. Well, I can't say honestly that all adults know how to think. A lot of us did not learn how to think. What we learned was, this is the way you're supposed to do things. Education was uh, I'll tell you, I went to college. I'm not kidding. I went to a fancy girl's school. I was on scholarship. This was a college. And um, I was taught how to slice lemon. I kid you not. This was one of the parts of my education as the proper way to slice a lemon. Well, you think that sounds silly. Of course, that was a long time ago. Okay, all right, I'm 70. But what I'm sharing with you is that so much of our education is teaching kids how we already think what we think we already know, 
and what we think is the right way to do everything. It's tradition. I want kids, of course, to get information, scientific information and so on, historical information, but I want kids to learn how to think. Think for themselves. Look at our world and say, just because you've been doing it, Mom, doesn't mean I should do it that way. See? So those are the four things that I think and we think that kids really need. They need fitness, cooperation, service, and thought. Well, instead of throwing kids out on the football field or into uh, sports situations where they're learning violence and competition, why don't we create programs that teach kids what they need, including a way to give themselves that physical exercise that they need and to give themselves that self-esteem that they so desperately need. And by the way, in these kinds of programs, there's no losers. I mean, we're talking like everybody wins in sports and they have this great feeling about themselves. Oh my God, what about the little leaguer who's there and he strikes out at the end of the game or she strikes out at the end of the game? There's so much shame, there's so much pain, spiritual, emotional, associated with the win-lose paradigm of the world. I'm done with win-lose. I'm done with it. I don't want to be better than you. I want everybody to be well, and I want to live in a thriving world. So what are we going to do? So we have this campaign, and I'm reaching out to you because I want you to bring this campaign to all of your friends. And you can put it on Facebook, and uh, you can talk to people, and you can say, you know, this is what we need to do in order to raise the next generation of human beings. But we're doing more than that. We're actually going to have a program now. In the innerrevolution.org, we have interrevolutionary families. And I want to tell you what interrevolutionary families are going to do with this uh, campaign of unleashing the power of kids. I want to talk just briefly about both that and what I mean when I say unleash the power of kids when I get to the end. What we're going to do is we're going to have super supportive Sundays. So instead of sitting there, stupefied watching football or playing it. And I'm picking on football because it's the national pastime. I mean, you could pick something else, right? We want kids to come together on our super supportive Sundays and they are going to do service. They're going to get cooperative exercise. They're going to practice thinking. They are going to have a ball. I know this because I've already seen it. See, it happens. So for example, we could have the kids, before they do an activity, let's say, all right, this is the day that we're going to go to a homeless shelter and feed, feed people. So first you talk about how you're feeling about it, what homelessness means to you. Uh, um, do you identify with people? Are you afraid to look at the homeless? You know, all of that kind of stuff. Then the kids go and they do their activities. And then they come back and they talk about it. They talk about how they felt, what they really felt. See, we have in the innerrevolution.org what we call the three commitments of the inner revolutionary. And those commitments are oneness, accountability, and mutual support. See, oneness means we really get it. We're one, you know, we're all connected. Two, we're accountable for the impact of our behavior. And three, we need to support everybody. And everybody will support us. It's not like, oh, I'm going to barter with you. Well, with these principles, which if you're interested, we, you can learn a lot more about with these principles, we know how to guide these conversations. We can talk to the kids about oneness and did they feel the pain. You know, it's not always easy to go do service work. Kids are sensitive. They feel the pain of others, but they also feel the joy of their contribution. So great opportunity for them to be thinking. And then we can also offer them an opportunity to do something physical, even after a service day. Like, oh, they can do dancing or they can go play some games that we're going to be creating or that already exist that are cooperative and physical. That's one kind of super supportive Sunday. Others could be just games that they come in and they play together. It's all physical fitness, but they're learning cooperation. And they're thinking, let the kids make up some games. Let them learn how to think. Well, I am so excited about this. Some of the pictures that you're seeing today are pictures of kids and adults who are engaged in our family program. You don't have to do super supportive. Sundays, and of course it could be Saturdays or Mondays, whatever works for you. But this is an idea, this is something we're doing. Our program is geared to unleashing the power of kids. Kids 
have tremendous potential, but what are they going to use it for? Are these kids, look, we just had a very interesting story uh, on our interrevolutionary radio show about, because we always have news of the interrevolution, about some prisoners, three prisoners who beat the Harvard debating team, the undergraduate debating team. And these were people who had done violent offenses and were in a maximum security prison. Think about the potential that those kids had. What did they do with it? What can they do with it? Over and over we see if we give people a chance, they can do something. How we are training them, what they saw as kids, the traumas they went through, the role models they saw, the options they had. See, we want to create a new world by creating new opportunities for kids to learn to be the kind of people they can be. Let us unleash their potential. Our campaign is being led by Helen Hillox. She's a marriage and family therapist. She's also the assistant spiritual director of the innerrevolution.org, a warm and wonderful person. You can reach her at Helen at the innerrevolution.org. Get in touch with her if you want to know more about our program. Get in touch with her if you want to join the campaign in some way. Let's talk. If you have some great ideas, get in touch with her. You can also get in touch with us via Facebook. We have a Facebook page. It's very slick. Oh, God, my glasses. Anyway, facebook.com forward slash the inner rev. Facebook.com forward slash the inner rev. I'm going to put it on the screen. You can send us a message on Facebook. See, we can talk. We can do this thing. Our family program. We have regular people who are trying to do this. You can learn more about our family program and super supportive Sundays. But mostly I want you to think about this campaign. See if it isn't filling something that is needed in your heart, in your family, in your community, in our world. You don't have to do what our family program is doing. You need to do what's right for you. But I can tell you one thing. In our campaign, we are inviting in kids and families of all kinds. We do not discriminate based on religion, race, gender, gender identification, geography, economic level, nothing. We are inclusive. We want this campaign to be inclusive. You find your own voice in this campaign, but our campaign is open to everyone because we're teaching oneness, accountability, and mutual support. Just think about it. Think about what we could do together. We'll have more about this as time goes on. Get in touch.